They watch the watch not warning stretched all the way down here to San Diego. Joining us now to talk about that and how big a threat a tsunami could be for our area is geologist San Diego State Professor Pat Abbott. Thank you so much for being here. Yeah, and, and Pat, at the very least, this was a great drill for San Diegans in this situation. At a 7.9 quake in Alaska, was there really a chance we could see a tsunami here in, in our area? Uh, yes, there is. And remember, the computer first said 8.2 when the warnings went out. Then it was downgraded to 7.9. But you know, we're right up in that area where the second largest earthquake we've ever measured, 9.2 magnitude mm. Alaska in 1964. So that has people all the more on the alert. Mm. And so the uh, usual thing up there is, you know, the big sub plate subducts down like this. But when you look at the moment tensor solution on the seismograph, you see that the actual movement was more horizontal. And of course, what's the tsunami? The more energy a movement ah. puts into the water, mm -hmm. the bigger the tsunami threat. That's what you expect there. But instead, the movement was more horizontal. That means not as much energy goes into the water. Therefore, the tsunami warning has been reduced. That's so interesting how you point out the different movement in the plates. What kind of seismic activity have you noticed in the Pacific? And is there anything we need to be concerned about moving forward after this big quake? Well, you know, we have had tsunami come here to San Diego. I mentioned that in 1964, Alaska. Now, when I say that, don't visualize 2011 Japan. Right, But right. I mean a tsunami coming in. And then, of course, we've had three really big earthquakes here, you know, with 2004 in the Indian Ocean, 9.1. Mm. The Jap uh, Japanese one, 2011, 9.0. That's three of the four biggest earthquakes we've ever measured mm. that have happened here within this 21st century. Now, the main place, if we still had the warning on where I would tell people to go, who feels the tsunami the most in San Diego? Boats. The place to go if you wanted to see one would be Shelter Island, Harbor Island, where the boats are tied mm -hmm. next to each other, especially the ones that aren't, uh, don't have the shelter of a pier or something or other, and then they bang against each other. And we get significant boat damage from these, uh, these earth tsunami from these earthquakes, but not the big killer waves from these ones way out in the Pacific. What's the rule of thumb? 100 feet above sea level, is that what should, people should do if this ever happens again? That's a nice rule of thumb, yes. Uh, the big trick of those is, you know, with tsunami, you tend to think of, and Hollywood does this for us, this huge yeah. wave. Mm -hmm. That's not the point. It's not the huge wave at all. It's frankly irrelevant. If you remember back in Japan in 2011, that footage from that helicopter, from the news helicopter in Japan, and you see the tsunami run in, mm -hmm. in, mm -hmm. in. It ran six miles inland. And so that's really the danger, not just the 100 feet elevation, but if you're on the floor of Mission Valley, you can be a mile inland, but what's the elevation? You're only a few feet yeah. above sea level, and that, that tsunami, a big tsunami, will run right up that, yeah. they're miles up Mission Valley. Yeah, all things good to think about. Hopefully this will not be an issue again, but as you point out, it's certainly possible if a, if a big one hits even that far away. Well, even that 100 feet, just say, if there's a warning, get elevation. Get up. Right. Yeah, get right. up and get be east. Safe. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Right. Pat Abbott, thank you so much for your insights Glad into this.